Hello friends, uh, uh, a brief topic of cancer larynx, the staging and the treatment summary kinds. I, I know there are a lot of confusion in a lot of you know people mind that how to really calculate the stage and how to decide the right treatment and I am I'm absolutely sure that this is the image we have in the books and notes and everywhere and we need to know the T1, T2, T3, T4 of supraglottic, glottic, subglottic separately. But believe me, it's practically not possible when you're appearing in an exam of 19 different subjects with so many tumors, with so many stagings that and then everything gets overlapped and then a lot of confusing questions are there. So I am trying to suggest to you a basic staging system which will be applicable to the multiple choice questions and you'll be able to decipher them properly, scientifically correct. Yes, not really, not like, like basic, doesn't mean that it can be wrong actually. Scientific right, but knowing the salient thing which you are supposed to know about staging and decide the treatment, beta. okay? Now, the first one is that, you know, the T1, beta, tumor staging T1. What is T1? T1 means only one structure involved. Tumor involving epiglottis is T1. T2 means more than one named structure involved, beta. Tumor involving epiglottis plus airy epiglottic fold is T2 better. Please understand, when one named structure is mentioned, only involvement, T1, but when more than one named structure is involved, like tumor involving epiglottis and the false vocal cord, two different names are there, T2. You can ask me, Rajiv, tell us, sir, if one vocal cord is involved versus two vocal cord are involved, is it T1 or T2? Guys, it is vocal cord only, na? Vocal cord only, na? So if one vocal cord is involved, it is called T1A. If both cord are involved, it is called T1B beta. So one vocal cord involved will be called T1A. Both cord involved will, will be called T1B because it is vocal cord. Again, please look into it. One named structure involved will be T1. More than one named structure involved will be T2 beta. Okay. Now what about T3? The most commonly asked multiple choice question is of T3 beta. Now T3 means vocal cord is fixed or immobile. If the MCQ mentioned every big, big story, but it is written that tumor involving, you know, this and that and that and the, and the left vocal cord is fixed or the right vocal cord is fixed or immobile beta. It is T3. Or there is involvement of some space mentioned like pre-epiglottic space or paraglottic space mentioned, then it is also T3. Any space involvement will be designated as T3 tumor beta. Here I would like to mention one thing. If tumor is causing the impaired vocal cord mobility, impaired, it is T2 beta. T2, impaired cord mobility will be counted as T2. For T3, only two words are permissible, either fixed vocal cord or immobile vocal cord, beta. okay? Or some space involvement, like pre-epiglottic space or paraglottic space involvement should be mentioned over there in the question, okay? Now, T4. Now, T4 is invasion of thyroid cartilage. Now, some of you may say that, sir, minor thyroid cartilage invasion is T3, and the major is T4, believe me guys, that's more bookish. In the real world, the, the, the kind of question come, if they mention thyroid cartilage invasion, count it as significant only, beta. it is T4. Th thyroid cartilage invasion or perichondritis of thyroid cartilage will be counted as T4 only, beta. T4 only. Or the tumor has passed through the, the thyroid cartilage and it has invaded some neck structure like thyroid gland. That's also T4, beta. T4. Okay, don't go to detail of T4A, T4B because treatment is not going to change with that better. Okay, fine, but say, let's revise once again the staging of the uh, laryngeal carcinoma. T1 means only one structure involved, only one named structure involved is T1, like tumor involving epiglottis. T2 means more than one named structure involved, like tumor involving epiglottis or airy epiglottic folds. Tumor involving epiglottis and airy epiglottic fold, I mean to say. Okay. T3 means the tumor is so extensive that it has caused the fixed vocal cord or immobile vocal cord or there is invasion of some space like pre-epiglottic space or paraglottic space. T4 means that there is invasion of thyroid cartilage or perichondritis of thyroid cartilage or tumor has gone extra laryngeal into neck structures, into neck structures like thyroid gland. Okay, now for the treatment part. Now T1, any glottic, supraglottic treatment is radiotherapy is the treatment of choice, okay? But nowadays with the advent of laser now, the T1 glottic cancer, the preferred treatment is laser surgery better than radiotherapy. If radiotherapy is not mentioned the choice, 
you know, please see, laser surgery is there or not, radiotherapy is not there or not. If both are mentioned in the choice, then laser surgery would get a preference. I repeat, T1, radiotherapy is the treatment of choice, but for T1 glottic cancer, if, read the question, if laser surgery is given as one of the choices, then select the laser surgery as the preferred modality of treatment for T1 glottic vocal cord cancer only, beta, as compared to radiotherapy. Now for T2, again T2, the treatment is radiotherapy. But the second option, if radiotherapy is not given the choice, the second option is partial laryngectomy. What is T2? Tumor involving epiglottis and eriepiglottic fold or tumor involving eriepiglottic fold and false vocal cord, that is T2. Now, the treatment of choice of T2 is radiotherapy, but the second best option would be partial laryngectomy. Partial laryngectomy is not being done that commonly nowadays because the reason is the prerequisite of partial laryngectomy is normal lung function. And these patients of carcinoma larynx are generally smokers and they generally have COPD kind of findings. So they don't qualify for the partial laryngectomies actually. Now partial laryngectomy is to be marked only for T2 in case radiotherapy is not mentioned in the choice. Better. Now partial laryngectomy is of two types. Better. Now you can cut the larynx either like this half or like this half better. Horizontal partial laryngectomy or vertical partial laryngectomy. I'm going to horizontal partial laryngectomy or vertical partial laryngectomy. Now what about the indication of horizontal and vertical partial? Very easy beta. Partial laryngectomies are of two type. HPL, VPL. There is no IPL. Horizontal partial laryngectomy or vertical partial laryngectomy. Now horizontal partial laryngectomy will be done for T2 supraglottic cancer. T2 supra, look at the name, supraglottic cancer means the growth is restricted to the area above the vocal cord, tumor involving epiglottis, eriepiglottic fold, but, but both vocal cords should be normal and should be mobile, they should be free from the cancer. The prerequisite of hor horizontal partial laryngectomy should be, it should be a T2 supraglottic cancer means tumor restricted to the supraglottic area, vocal cord both should be normal, free of growth and mobile beta, okay? And the lung function should be normal. Now, vertical partial laryngectomy is done for T2 glottic cancer beta. T2 glottic, glottic cancer means the growth is focusing on one vocal cord and maybe on that side only, it is growing onto the, you can say, eriepiglottic fold or involving, you know, false vocal cord on one side only. The prerequisite of vertical partial should be that the growth should be involving one hemilarynx beta. Okay, please understand horizontal and vertical partial. When the growth is in the supraglottic area here, beta, supraglottic area over here, then you can cut it over like this horizontal partial. You remove this much, you save this much, beta. When the growth is on one vocal cord involving this side only over here, T2 glottic, then you cut it like this, you remove this much and you save this much, beta. So horizontal partial laryngectomy is done for T2 supraglottic cancer and the prerequisite of surgery is the growth should be limited to the supraglottic area. It should be T2. The both vocal cords should be free of growth and should be mobile beta. And vertical partial T2 glottic means the growth should be limited to one hemi larynx beta. Okay. And for both of them, the main prerequisite is lung function should be normal. Okay. This is the second option after radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is the primary treatment of T2. If not mention the choice, then you think about the partial laryngectomies beta. Okay. Now, T3 and T4. T3, T4 is total laryngectomy plus minus radical neck dissection followed by radiotherapy. Beta. If there is a neck node also, then you do radical neck dissection followed by radiotherapy. The standard therapy of T3 or T4, what is T3? Vocal cord is fixed or vocal cord is immobile or some space is involved like pre-epiglottic or paraglottic space. What is T4? There is invasion of thyroid cartilage or thyroid perichondritis is there or some extra laryngeal neck structure involvement is there. In all these, you know, tumors, which are bigger ones, you have to go for total laryngectomy plus minus radical neck dissection followed by radiotherapy beta. Okay, fine. Now, second best option, if the question says that patient is of T3 or T4, but patient is unwilling for surgery, patient is unfit for surgery, or what is the other option available in place of surgery, then the answer is Concurrent chemo radiation, beta. Concurrent chemo radiation. Am I clear, beta? So once again, let's revise the summary. T1 radiotherapy, but for T1 glottic cancer, 
laser surgery is a preferred treatment nowadays as compared to radiotherapy. T2, radiotherapy is a treatment of choice, but second best option is the partial laryngectomy. Horizontal partial done for T2 supraglottic, vertical partial done for T2 glottic, but the prerequisite of partial laryngectomy is normal lung function. T3, T4, the best treatment will be the total laryngectomy plus minus radical neck dissection followed by radiotherapy, but if second best option, patient unwilling, patient unfit, then the second best option is concurrent chemo radiation with Okay, now to, before we finish, let's do a clinical, you know, vignette. Now let's, do, this is a real time paper beta, this is a real time exam and we start getting scared. Don't be scared, you'll be able to solve it. CT scan of the patient of the carcinoma larynx has been found to have the involvement of epiglottis, look at the name, epiglottis and right ventricular band. Wait here. Two name came, two name structure came, epiglottis. Ventricular band means false vocal cord. Two name, it is minimum T2 beta, minimum T2. Let's go further. Right true vocal cord and invading into pre-epiglottic space. Yes, I know. If any space is involved, it is T3. So the answer of this question is total laryngectomy plus radiotherapy. Total laryngectomy plus radiotherapy. Had it been with the right vocal cord fixed, again T3, total laryngectomy plus radiotherapy beta. Okay. Thyroid cartilage involved. Again, total laryngectomy, radiotherapy. Perichondritis, thyroid cartilage. Again, total laryngectomy, radiotherapy. These are the most commonly asked questions. Don't be scared, beta. You'll be able to solve it, okay? One confusing question is this one, beta. The last one. Laryngeal carcinoma patient has involvement of epiglottis, right airy epiglottic fold. Oh, there is involvement of two structure, epiglottis and airy epiglottic fold. Two named structure involved, it is T2. And it is supraglottic, beta. Epiglottis is a part of supraglottis. Airy epiglottic fold is a part of supraglottis. Both vocal cord are normal and mobile. The growth has not involved the vocal cord. Growth are, is absolutely restricted to supraglottis. So please understand that the staging of the tumor is T2 supraglottic cancer. Growth involving epiglottis, right airy epiglottic fold. Both cord are normal and mobile. Growth has not touched the vocal cord. It is purely T2 supraglottic. Why T2? Two named structure involved, epiglottis and the airy epiglottic fold. Now, for T2, the best treatment of choice is radiotherapy. But radiotherapy is not given in the answer, beta. This is T2. Radiotherapy is the treatment of choice, but that's not given the answer. Then for T2 supraglottic cancer, the second best option is horizontal partial laryngectomy. Do you remember? Horizontal partial laryngectomy is done for T2 supraglottic cancer, which it is. The prerequisite is both vocal cords should be normal and mobile. Okay? So, because radiotherapy is not in the choice, that's why we go for the second best option is horizontal partial laryngectomy. Beta. Okay? So, keep learning, Vijay. Uh, you know, it was just, you know, an attempt on my part to keep it simple for you. I know you are dealing with lot, 19 subjects. And... Uh, I am not claiming that it is really as per the book, but this really solves the question and it is scientifically also correct. Just to keep these data points in your mind about the laryngeal carcinoma staging and its management. Thank you.